Alright, so I wanted to do a quick video to keep you guys up to date with what is going on in Pokemon Unite because we have some pretty crazy high level analysis. What this person does, they check the top 100 players in Pokemon Unite, they see the main Pokemon they play, and then they go and just kind of show who is playing what in the top ranks. So here are the main Pokemon played from the top 100 as of day 7. So one week into Pokemon Unite, end of week, this is what we have. Then there's also a change from day 5, so we can see how the Pokemon are shifting around in even a short time span. So number 1 is... Cinderace and I agree with this one. I feel like Cinderace is really just a high skill cap high level character and when it's played at that high level there's really nothing Cinderace can't do it secures Dreadnought it easily secures Zapdos it can steal Zapdos and then if you have like a lot of tanks and a lot of like team play going on it's just on the outside of the fight doing way too much damage and it can feel unstoppable in certain situations now personally for me I feel Cinderace is manageable as a cram rat so I just need to wait for him to use like his blaze kick or his faint then you catch him on a surf that's kind of it. Maybe Whirlpool, that's like half his health. So he's, he is really squishy. Cinderace is really balanced in my opinion. Now, I don't know if this means that Cinderace needs a nerf, or if it's just flavor of the month, or if it's just a consequence of only having two 80 carry type Pokemon, the other one being Greninja. But comparing Greninja to Cinderace is like having Season 11 Corky versus Launch of Felios. You, Cinderace just, just feels better in every situation right now. Now, Greninja does have some play, but it's actually lost popularity over the couple of days. Now, this doesn't track the individual people you know it's all like oh this was the number one ranked player and they got shifted down a little bit but he's still kind of playing the same thing the ranks of like like who is in the top 100 could change very quickly so we could just see different kind of mains falling in and out maybe in the time of that day so whenever this snapshot of pokemon is taken it doesn't necessarily mean it's representative of the best pokemon or the most played pokemon overall also, another problem with taking stats directly from the top 100 and trying to draw conclusions with them is that most of the players are in teams. So there's a massive advantage just having five dedicated tryhard people in the same rank ladder as solo queue players. Now, there are some people that have gotten into master just from solo queue, but they're at a massive disadvantage. It also shows like different team compositions. Would Eldegoss be the second most picked Pokemon or the second most mained Pokemon in a solo ladder? My gut feeling tells me probably not, but also, once again, Eldegoss is unique when it comes to the role that it plays in Pokemon Unite right now. It's the only dedicated healer. It's really the only support. Yeah, Mr. Mime and Wigglytuff are classified as supports because they have slightly supportive things, and, like, Wigglytuff's Unite move is mostly supportive, but it's not just like, hey, it's always there healing, shielding, providing tons of benefit to the team. I think that this is very a very team-focused Pokemon. So if you have four other people and a dedicated Eldegoss strategy, Eldegoss is far more successful. Now, I have seen some weird stuff, and I'm very supportive of Jungle Eldegoss, but I find it to be probably less successful if it's just like solo queue, or just the random bot lane or top lane Gossifleur Eldegoss player. I don't think there's going to be as much presence if there isn't like dedicated in communication, in comms, coordinated play or something like that. Now, Lucario. Lucario is a Pokemon. It's like the secret's out, I guess. I feel I put it a little too low on my tier list just from first impressions because now like all of a sudden Lucario has gone bot lane it's doing a million damage and it out damages anything else and like Zeraor or Gengar goes into the jungle and Lucario is still able to get a good amount of damage and experience and that snowballs lane and that just kind of keeps up with the jungle somehow as a laner and I don't know where that damage comes from comes from I look at the stats I play with Lucario and it's just like the opponent's Lucario is always better and always knows how to put out more damage than anyone on my team or anyone when I see them playing Lucario or even me when I play Lucario. So like the Lucario mains out there, they're picking up on something and I can see like this is where maybe the solo queue players or this is where, you know, the more just aggressive strategy and really figuring out of a character comes through because yeah, that's a pretty big jump and I think that Lucario having this kind of presence in a roster of 20 kind of makes sense. Well, now 21 because of Gardevoir. But I think, like, yeah, that, that seems about right. Next up, we have Snorlax at 9. Snorlax, best tank in the game. Just shuts down team fights, splits up team fights, has incredible abilities and crowd control and uh, just, like, lockdown and securing of objectives. So, I could also see Snorlax, yeah, like, maining Snorlax. That's a pretty safe way of winning games, or at least, like, 
carrying bad opponents into higher ranks. If you play Snorlax, are you guaranteed to get Master or even Ultra rank? No. But are you going to float out of beginner and great tier and like get into high expert? Probably. Like, yeah, you can you can really salvage a lot of bad players by just having good blocks, good knockups, good unite moves, and just kind of playing with it. And also if the opponent's team is pretty bad or having bad objective play or something like that, and it's kind of even and just low skill, it's not like can just like 1v5 and win the game for themselves almost and just have a little bit of support from bad players and you're good to go. But then like that just kind of scales into the higher ranks. So Snorlax being here makes sense. Nine tails! Nine tails mains are wacky. I'm talking about you, Fatal. I've seen you in my games. You're definitely the number one nine tails in the world. I put it at S tier in my tier list video because it, like, once Ninetales comes online, you can't stop it. Even, like, in lane, even, like, level 4 and level 5, all of a sudden, just too much damage and too much CC. And people that know how to balance the auto attacks and just keep that passive proc feels like you're just perma CC'd for no reason. Much like Lucario. Like, a bad Lucario, the difference between a bad Lucario player and a great Lucario player just makes the floor and ceiling of this character feel like it's not quite S tier because the floor is too low. And even when a skilled player bottoms out on the character, it feels like they could underperform pretty hard, but like really strong, consistent Ninetales players, it's crazy how they do so much damage, but also support because of Auroraville, but also support because of CC, and then just like command everything in the game, lane and objectives, and then just like get random picks too. Like, the autonomy of this character when played well, yeah, I can see why it has number 5 presence in Master Rank once you like really understand it. Gengar at 6 plus 0. So once again, like, Seeker was out on Gengar pretty early, buffed from the beta or whatever happened to it, just hex and then spam stats. People just saying, yo, you don't see Gengar as much in a high elo play because you just see, see it, bro. It's intangible for like ever. And if you get if it gets that sludge bomb and just just things happen, like it kills you. There's no counterplay to the amount of damage this character puts out. That's why balance exists. You can't just be like, yeah, well you can just beat it. No, like Balance exists to knock down the things that just can't be dealt with, and this goes to even other games like League of Legends. Where nah, man, Season 3 Talon was balanced. Being able to jump behind someone and silence them as an assassin, why would we ever get rid of anything like that? Why would we ever tune it? Just counterplay it, bro. Uh, same thing with Draven's crit bleed passive, or all the other ludicrous things, like Lucian just used to have 25 more range. Just for free. So, yeah, like, again, this is why, like, balance exists, and people are just like, the people that play Gengar, they're sticking to Gengar, they got it pretty good. Zero Aura, also increasing, still in top 10, so still on the greater side of being picked up, and once again, this is all already, like, offset by just dedicated team composition. You know, the, the, the multiple five stacks out there that run the same five Pokemon because they haven't figured out, or that's just where most of their mastery is. They might have, like, better options or like there could be Pokemon that are just better but they just pick those five because that's what they practice and that's what they can kind of like cheese into master rank with. Slowbro at five getting the plus three I think Slowbro is a fraudulent Pokemon I think it's the second worst in the game doesn't really like do anything like sure I guess like also in team coordinated play where it's like yeah I can slow beam someone and telekinesis them and they all get piled on cool but at the same time Snorlax is just a better tank and having really any other character in the game can provide some kind of utility and then just more damage and that's what you need to really just kind of like push into the objectives get that lead and then take it over so slow bro I think it's just too especially like in laning like it just gets bullied out laning and just doesn't get do too much as wanders around and just kind of has a slight opportunity to maybe change the team fight a couple of times but if those miss then yeah slow bro is just a miss Cramorant at four with the plus three People watching my videos or something are just picking it up because, like, yeah, I think, like, Cramorant's starting to get that rise because once you understand it, you know, Cramorant's just nuts. It takes over landing on that Whirlpool. It's it's crazy. Uh, if any of these people are picking Air Slash, again, fraudulent. They have no right being in the top 100 with Cramorant because Hurricane is a better play. But Hurricane, it takes time to make sure, like, you get those predictive Hurricane jumps. You can bounce it into a team multiple people, chaining it into the Waterfall. And if you miss those, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, if you have good fundamentals and you can land abilities, Cramorant can hold its own. Now, Machamp, dropping off a bit in popularity. Once again, it's, like, it's not like this is a definitive popularity hold. It's like, oh man, the two of the four Machamp players, they got bullied out because like a team just five stacked and then all like that whole team jumped somewhere into the top 100 and kicked a few people below them out or something. I, I think Ch Machamp is definitely like a tier character. Um, the laning, the jungling, 
It just gets level 5, charges at you, punches people out, bullies them down. The Unite move, you can't do it. It's it's literally unstoppable. You, you're immune to CC when you're doing your abilities, and then you can just, like, grab people, claim them, KO them, and even, like, focusing down a Machamp is hard, because you can't lock it in place to make sure all of your damage, all your abilities land. And he's also a bulky boy, so he's going to grab someone, he's going to kill them, and he can do that to multiple people. If that's your carry, well, dang. That fight's over. Charizard. Well, Charizard's about to drop off. This is where it gets interesting because the Charizard changes. There was that bug fix in the patch notes. Doesn't look like any other buffs or nerfs or changes. So we're going to keep an eye on that, but we don't have like any other patch details. It's where Muscle Band, the passive, was over procking on Charizard's flamethrower. So now Charizard's just weaker, and it was already a kind of weak character. The only thing holding it together was like 80 carry Charizard. But now without that, we're going to see what happens. I think like people found out about the Muscle Band. Climbed up a little bit, but Charizard might actually go down to like no presence because people just could abandon it. That's another thing. Like, if people just abandon a main and just play something else more, that's also going to change the rank, even though their rank hasn't changed. That's a thing. Greninja also losing a little bit of popularity. I saw a lot of things earlier on. People were like, well, Greninja has picked a lot in the top 100, so you putting it at B tier is wrong. He's really good. Or once again, people just abandon the Greninja. They just find out that Cinderace is better and pick up Cinderace or something like that. And, yeah, like, Greninja, it, it's cool. You can reset on Surf. But against a coordinated team or skillful players, you aren't going to just execute, execute, execute. We're, we're not dealing with Katarina here. We're not dealing with some kind of, like, crazy reset champion on the KOs. Especially when Gengar exists. Gengar doesn't even have to KO to reset a higher damage ability that's also AoE easier while being untargetable. And Greninja only, like, one of Greninja's abilities is just... I lost, I'm running away now so I don't die, but that doesn't really do much inside of Pokemon Unite, and it doesn't have any more damage, so it just kind of falls off right there. Pikachu at 3, losing a little bit, little bit of presence. Uh, Pikachu not feeling strong as beta, still pretty good. Uh, a really good Pikachu can still like hold its own in Masters, I feel, but yeah, maybe some Pikachu mains like switch to Cramorant or Cinderace or something. I don't know what happened here, but yeah, Pikachu is like... Probably, probably belongs here and probably stays around here regardless of where all the other Pokemon like float around or something. It's just like, I think it's just, we're looking at Cinderace, Eldegoss, Team Comps with like a Lucario bot or top. Like yeah, maybe like Cinderace, Eldegoss, bot or top and then a stray Lucario, maybe, maybe not in the jungle. And like that's half of the five stacks out there, which is a majority of Master Top 100. So like overweighting and then just other Pokemon that just like stray belong. What, mad respect to the one Absol guy though. The guy's just like, yeah. Uh, Zero Aura and Gengar are absolutely getting a nerf at some point, so putting your time into another character right now will pay off in the long run. Playing the long game will be more valuable. Also, just mastering this easy Pokemon and getting a little better, making sure you're just, like, not scuffing it, getting the jungle pathing down, those ganks, and just, like, playing into the strengths of the character and just becoming a good Absol, you can find yourself in, in Master Tier. However, here's where it all comes together. No Venusaur. No Wigglytuff, no Talonflame, Crustle, Mr. Mime, or Garchomp. This, I feel, is wrong. Like, Mr. Mime, there has to be the God tier Mr. Mime. There, like, I think there's a couple of Mr. Mime mains out there that are absolutely top 100 caliber in Masters. But again, they're just getting bullied out by the five mans, or there's just other prevalence for other core strats right now. Maybe just unlucky. Maybe two of them got bumped down or something. Zero Garchomp. I don't think this means that Garchomp is bad. I don't think that this means like, oh, people were wrong about Garchomp, look at that. This list is not something to take away from. You can actually see in the comments, people are overvaluing this list, as I've already explained, like, the five problems with it so far. So no Garchomp. Garchomp doesn't just get, like, mainstay, hold hard into it. Crustle, much like Mr. Mon, even though Crustle doesn't feel as strong from the beta, I think that there's a couple of Crustle players that definitely deserve top 100. Talonflame, though, awful. Okay, so here's how it goes. Venusaur's the worst. Slowbro's the second worst, Talonflame's third worst, Wigglytuff is fourth worst. So seeing these three, not surprised at all. I feel like eventually people are going to find out that Slowbro is com completely fraudulent, so there's no, like, those Pokemon won't be there. And then the mains, the people that really understand these Pokemon, they can work their way into the top 100, or at least be recognized as, like, yo, these are master Pokemon, for sure. Wigglytuff damage falls off too much, and it's in a weird supportive, non-supportive role. You can do cool things with rollout, but... It's hard against skill players. Talonflame is just like, no damage. It, it has, it's, it's like, Talonflame's a true speedster. Speedsters shouldn't have one-shot assassinations like 
uh, Zero Aura and Gengar, especially AoE. Like, I believe Absol. Absol can, like, take out one person and then have some AoE. It's Unite Move isn't the craziest, but it's also solid damage. It might find, like, an extra team fight execute. Absol's balanced in that way. But, you know, Zero Aura and Slowbro, or not Slowbro, Zero Aura and Gengar being able to AoE, Unite Move, not be targeted, or not a AoE, Unite Move, just AoE burst while being not targetable and not e super easy to kill. That's unacceptable. So Talonflame's like a true speedster, but now there's just too much priority on Zapdos. Zapdos makes it where like Talonflame doesn't get to backdoor 100 points and then like sneak around and move around and something. Just too weak in the jungle, takes too long to scale and doesn't do anything in the late game. And then Venusaur's just bad in every way. So we got this little note right here. Tomorrow we'll begin week two with Gardevoir being added in. Possible balance changes, doesn't seem like balance changes. Then we'll give it a couple days. We'll have another update. We'll see if Gardevoir finds its way in here. And I think really nothing matters until the balance changes. Like once Zapdos, Zero Aura, and Gengar get nerfed, the game's gonna be interesting. Like there's actually going to be depth to Pokemon Unite outside of those three things, just making the games less fun. Game's still amazing, game's still great, but yeah. Uh, still can't believe I spent 1,000 or 10,000 coins on Garchomp. That wasn't a waste. Garchomp is definitely A tier. Garchomp is definitely one of the best characters. You just gotta commit to it. Sign between Garchomp and Machamp. Chose Machamp in the end. Guess I got lucky there. And this is what I mean. People that can't really think for themselves, that get caught up in the popular opinion, even though it's not correct. You know, guess I got lucky there because Machamp at this, at the snapshot of this, was just happened to be a couple in the top 100 because there's more dedicated Machamp players than Garchomp, even though I think Garchomp, not the same. Yeah, I think Garchomp's about the same. Like, Machamp has really taken off, but Garchomp is still very strong teamfight Pokemon, very strong. And, it, it, like, even for its, like, weird leveling and, like, kind of late game, it still scales pretty well. Like, it, it can still get there. So now you didn't get lucky. I still can't believe how difficult it is to get coins and expensive Pokemon licenses. Again, this is also where people are just stupid. You can't unlock every League of Legends champion in a week, and you couldn't even do that, like, on launch or anything, unless you bought the actual starter edition. Even, even then, like, I don't... People want to get everything instantly handed to them. And also, you get a lot of Pokemon. Cinderace, actually, problem number six with this list. Pokemon popularity versus cost versus how free it is. Everyone got Cinderace. Everyone got Ninetales. So, yeah, everyone gets Cinderace. Everyone gets one of the best. Like, everyone just gets a free S tier. And also, it was safe to buy Cinderace because you're going to get those coins back when Cinderace became available for the uh, login bonuses. So, just, just camp that. Just play that. And I think Eldegoss is cheap or something, so it's a pretty safe buy. So, I mean, like, yeah, just play the game. Just play the game a lot. You get coins for leveling. Uh, there was like an early week re reset. We didn't have to wait seven days for it to be a new week in Pokemon Unite. So we also got coin reset there. And then just a lot of other unlocks and energy meters and things that way. So yeah, you can get enough characters to buy a couple. Or you get enough coins to buy a couple of characters. And then in a couple of weeks or even months from now, it's like, yeah, you won't you won't be able to buy anything because you've bought everything already. The game has to have longevity in some kind of way. It's also a, a free game that you're putting like 100 hours into. You're not going to spend 5, 10 bucks to get a character. Nah. <laughs> Awful takes. Uh, thanks for the update. Save the 4 and 5 day post. Checked out several times for day 6. I think people just overvaluing, putting too much weight into that. And then, a last little bit of stupidity to end this video on, but Zero Aura OP, am I right? Well, yeah, it, it is. It's objectively overpowered and overtuned and just needs to be knocked down a bit for all levels of play, including Master Tier, and it's still top 10. Like, okay, wait, wait, wait. Pokemon with top 10 presence in the top 100 players. Not OP. Memes. Sarcasm. Actually gaining presence. And then people are joking on it when, once again, it's all five stacks and all, like, specific Pokemon that are more taking over. And then also Zeraora tied with Slowbro, so even then, and then one behind Gengar and two behind Ninetales, which is, like, kind of dedicated mains and stuff. With Ninetales on the decline. Wh what? How? This is what I mean, like, people just stupid. People, people trying to look for their confirmation bias because they're actually bad at the game. As always, stronger units in the meta are the most discussed, well-known, and ultimately counter. There's no counter to Zero Aura just Unite moving in and blowing up a team. There's no counterplay to the level 5 gank where he gets three dashes so he can catch up onto you, heal as you're trying to hurt him, but maybe as you're also losing health in some kind of lane trade, and then stick onto you through your flash. And then when level 7 happens, he gets just discharged, so he gets that shield. He also takes damage, which makes his passive stronger, and then he gets his shield, and then he does more damage with discharge. And then he sticks onto you while doing all those procs. No, it's over tuned. Like I said, Season 3 Talon, uh, Draven's Bleed. LeBlanc Silence, Launch Udir, and Zin Zhao. 
The list goes on forever. We never, you never need to nerf anything, guys. You never need to ever nerf any character because they'll always be discovered and countered. So yeah, there we go, guys. Just kind of giving you an idea as to what's going on in the higher level of plays, why Pokemon might be getting picked more than others, where people are kind of landing, what the Pokemon's potential is, and then just kind of cautionary advice as to how to handle this kinds of data. Um, just consider that when you see really anything, not just necessarily this exact kind of format and this exact kind of take onto where Pokemon are landing. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.